So next question, we have functions f and g are defined by those two. So first thing, f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, where x can be any value. Again, you can see here, 2x minus 5 is a straight line. Right, pretty easy. Now, g of x is 4 over 2 minus x, where x cannot be the value of 2. So obviously, if x is 2, you have 2 minus 2 is 0, and we cannot divide by 0. That would not be possible. So let's move on to question part 1. Find the value of x for which we have this. So let's first find this. What is f of g of x? It is simply 2 times g of x minus 5 is equal to 7. So 2 times g of x is what? That will be 2 times this, that will be 8 over 2 minus x. That will be, send this over here, that will be 12. Then we can kind of simplify, divide by um, 4 on both sides, that will have to be. 2, that will be 3. Divide by 4 on both sides, you will have this, and then we can cross multiply, you will have 2 here, and that will be uh, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 3 times x. So 3x will be the value of, we can send this over here, that will be 4, so x will be 4 over 3. That will be part 1 of the question. Just solving the equation one by one, step by step, right? Now for part 2, we have to express f inverse and this in terms of x. So let's see what can we do. Part one, part two, sorry. So f inverse of x, so we have to first let y equal to f of x, which is this, then make x become the subject. So we have 2x equal to y plus 5, so x will be y plus 5 divided by 2. So here we conclude f inverse, it is in terms of x, so we have to write x plus 5 divided by 2. Now here we have g inverse of x. So let y is equal to g of x, which is 4 over 2 minus x. Then we cross multiply, you will have what? 2y minus xy is equal to 4. Now xy is equal to 2y minus 4. So x, sorry, so x will be what? 2y minus 4 over y. So finally, g inverse of x is simply 2x minus 4 over x. So these are the two things we are trying to find in terms of x. Now for part 3, we have to show this has no real roots. So let's have a look. Let's try to equate those two equations. So we have g inverse here, x plus 5 over 2. And here we have g inverse 2x minus 4 over x. So simplify, let's try to cross multiply. You will have what? You will have x squared plus 5x is equal to 4x minus 8, right? Then we have to send everything to one side. You will have x squared. Then we have, uh, so plus 5 minus 4, that should be plus 1x, and plus 8 have to be 0. Now we have to show they have no real roots. So to show real roots, we have to look at the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. Right, so let's see. So here we have 1, 1. So a is 1 b is 1, and c is 8. So b squared minus 4ac. So b squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 and times 8. That will be 1 minus 32, and that should be minus 31. So you can write, since uh, b squared, the discriminant, minus 4ac is less than 0, it shows it has no real roots. Again, they must be, uh, they are looking for these indication for the marks. You have to show that you have tried this and then this, and then because of that, you don't have any real roots. Now let's move on to part four of the question. On a single diagram, we have to uh, sketch the graph of this and this and making clear the relationship between the two graphs. Now, I think these kind of questions come up pretty often and it's pretty easy as well. The main thing we understand that the relationship between a graph and its inverse is always going to be a reflection in the line y equal to x. So that's the relationship that they need to have. For example, let me just kind of sketch this one. It doesn't need to be exact. Have an idea. So the first point I can have for this will be, let's say x is, um, so have y equal to f of x is 2x minus 5. The value of x, let's say 0, y will be minus 5. Let's say x is 1, y will be 
minus uh, 3. So first one is 0 will be minus 5 is here, let's say for example here, and then we have 1 minus 3, let's say it will be somewhere over here. Then we join those two by a straight line, it will be a straight line going in this direction. That will be simply y equal to f of x. Now we have to show that they are kind of connected by a reflection along this line. You have to label this as y equal to x. Now obviously the other line is pretty easy, we just have to kind of reflect this over the other side. For example, we can just kind of try your best to do the measurements. For example, that will be something like this. So we have to show this a reflection and label this as well as y equal to f inverse of x. Again, this is one mark is to draw this one, one mark is to draw this one, and finally we have to show this one as the third mark. So this will be a question in relation to functions, and it usually comes all the time in your test or exam, so please do understand the concept behind doing these questions. And with that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you next time.